pipes for a great variety of uses are a common feature of factories. They include supply pipes for liquid raw materials, oil supply pipes for heating, water supply pipes for cooling, and discharge pipes for the removal of wastewater and other liquid waste. The pressure to move fluid and gases within pipes is provided by pumps. the basic workings and characteristics of all the equipment they use and endeavour to do thorough cleaning which will maintain the equipment in proper working order and facilitate early detection of malfunctions or abnormalities. Hello again. In volume two, we're going to look at some examples of applied preventive maintenance, focusing on those two vital pieces of equipment found in any workplace, motors and pumps. Let's look at motors first. Just think of the convenience of motors. At any time, whatever power we require is made instantly available with just the flick of a switch. Motors are also pretty tough. They seldom break down and they don't demand a lot of time for cleaning. But since they are the heart of any machine, it's vital that operators understand how they operate and how they should be cleaned. Let's take a look at the basic types of motors and their construction. The basic function of motors is to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and supply power to machines. Depending on the type of power source, there are two basic types of motors, direct current and alternating current. They are used for different purposes according to their particular characteristics. Let's take a look at DC motors first. The basic characteristic of DC motors is that they generate a strong starting torque, allowing good variable speed control. The basic components of a DC motor are the outer casing and bracket, the fixed main magnetic pole, the rotating armature and commutator, the brush for conveying the electricity, and the brush holder. DC motors with this kind of basic structure can be divided roughly into two types. One is a shunt motor, in which the windings of the magnetic pole and the armature are connected in parallel. The other is a series motor, in which the windings are connected in series. Shunt motors can control speed and tension accurately over a wide range, and are used, for example, in rolling machines. Series motors are used for equipment such as cranes and belt conveyors, which require a strong starting torque and lots of traction. Compound motors, which have the characteristics of both types, are less common, but are used, for example, with lathes. Now let's take a look at alternating current motors. The main characteristics of AC motors is that they are easy to handle and rarely break down. So they're used for a wide range of applications, from factory equipment to domestic electric appliances. The most popular type of AC motor is the three-phase induction motor.
An AC motor basically consists of a stator, a rotor and shaft. There are two types of three-phase induction motor, depending on the construction of the rotor. The wound type and the squirrel cage type. Wound rotor motors have a brush just like DC motors and are mostly used for equipment such as cutting machines which need a strong starting torque. Squirrel cage motors operate at a fixed speed and are used for pumps, blowers, engineering equipment, etc. AC motors in general have a very simple construction. They are very rugged and reliable, and as long as they are used in the proper fashion, they rarely suffer breakdowns. AC, DC, motors, rotors. Well, that was a brief overview of the structure of different types of motor. The point is to make sure that you know which type of motor is being used in the equipment you're responsible for. Because motors are such an important part of our production equipment, it's vital to take as much care of them as possible. So let's now look at cleaning procedures. Operators basically deal with the cleaning of visible parts. Let's begin with the outer frame and casing. If you can't read what's written on the nameplate, then it's obviously dirty. Next, it's essential to remove all dirt and oil from the bearing and the surrounding parts. This will reveal any scratches or defective parts. Remember that cleaning equals checking. The way to get rid of dirt and filings stuck to the cooling fan is to use an air blower from outside the cover. All the machines in use in the factory are driven by motors. That means motors are crucial to our work. If a motor breaks down, the equipment will grind to a halt, and that can lead to major production losses. Since the operators are the people who work with the machines every day and have contact with the motors, they are in the best position to discover malfunctions and abnormalities on the job and through the cleaning process. Well. Now let's turn our attention to the other essential piece of production line equipment, pumps. Pumps can be divided into three basic types according to the way they operate. The first major type is centrifugal pumps. 
which transfer fluids by using a wheel fitted with vanes, called an impeller, rotating inside the casing. This is similar to a runner wheel in a turbine. The second type is positive displacement, or hydraulic pumps. These can be either reciprocating pumps, which use pressure created by a piston or diaphragm, or rotary pumps, in which the pressure is created by rotating vanes or gears. And third, there are special types of pump, including jet ejector pumps and air and gas lift pumps. Let's have a look at the basic construction of a few different types of pump and their special characteristics. First, centrifugal pumps, of which there are many varieties. In a centrifugal pump, the motor drives the impeller to create a centrifugal force. Pressure is created in the volute to force out the liquid. Not only can centrifugal pumps be used for large quantities of liquid, they can also raise the level of the liquid. As a result, they're used for many purposes. This is a diffuser or combination pump. The liquid flows into the impeller diagonally. It is driven by centrifugal force and lift is generated by the rotation of the impeller. The diffusion vanes then eliminate the rotational velocity before the liquid flows out. This kind of pump is ideal for pumping large volumes of liquid, so it is commonly used for cooling water. This is a reciprocating plunger pump, a type of piston pump. The rotation generated by the motor on the crankshaft is changed to reciprocation to drive the piston. The liquid is pumped from the suction valve to the discharge valve. Since it is relatively easy to adjust the pressure, this type of pump is often used for pumping fluids up to a high level. This is a gear pump, another type of positive displacement pump. In a gear pump, the rotation generated in the driving parts is transferred directly to the gear wheels and liquid is pumped continuously from the inlet to the discharge outlet. This type of pump is particularly reliable with viscous liquids and is often used for lubricating pumps. Just like motors, pumps are a familiar part of the workplace which are very easily overlooked. In effect, they are the heart of the factory, supplying all the vital fluids and gases to wherever they're needed for the production process or wherever hydraulic pressure is required. So it's essential that we constantly check whether every pump is working the way it should be. And through careful cleaning, we can detect any problems at an early stage. So what about the cleaning procedures for pumps? Pumps basically consist not only of a motor and the pump mechanism, but also pipes for supply and discharge and various types of valves. Operators have to clean all the auxiliary parts as well as the pump itself. Here are the main points to remember. First, the outer casing must be carefully cleaned. As with motors, if the nameplate can't be read, there's too much dirt. The shaft coupling can easily get dirty with oil, and it needs polishing in the same way as the bearing. This will reveal scratches, looseness, etc.
Packings and seals are used because of the variety of liquids flowing inside the pumps and valves. Some packing glands are designed to leak a certain amount to avoid overheating. Mechanical seals, which include collar rings, seal rings and V-packing, can completely prevent leakage. Careful checking of all seals is required. It's important to clean the flange area connecting the impeller and the diffuser vanes. In the case of the hood and the valves and filter at the suction end, these may need replacing rather than just cleaning. In this volume, we've been looking at the basic structure of motors and pumps and how to go about cleaning them. As we've seen, they are both vital pieces of equipment and that means they have to be maintained properly. The operator's responsibilities include regular cleaning, daily checking, lubrication, and parts exchange as necessary. That is what we mean by effective preventive maintenance, something which is a crucial part of every operator's job. But sometimes that's not enough. So in volume three, we'll be looking at troubleshooting and what we call corrective maintenance. See you there. <laughs>